All right. Do, 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 do. We're going right now. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's the echo again. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, we are live. Welcome everybody to Love Speaks Love and I am your host Denise and today my beautiful guest is Christy Sparksman. Welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> my absolute pleasure. Um, okay, I'm just going to, if anybody was sure. <laughs> We're having a dance party. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a shock. <laughs> a bit. <laughs> and breathe. <laughs> that made me jump. Okay. Share. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share. I'm going to share it to my two pages. Share there. So there's a little storm going on here that you might hear in the background. It's a very soft one at the moment, but hopefully it'll get like more, oh, more vibrant. Ah. <sighs> Oh, it's starting to rain. How lovely. I would love it if it was storming out here. It's just so humid. I just moved here and I'm just getting used to the change in air density, <laughs> I guess you could say. So it's very dry in Canada. Yeah. At least in the mountain prairies area where I was living. It's such a change. It's just like very moist here. So what kind of, what kind of... <laughs> use that word no sorry <laughs> no one likes that word i'm trying to bring back that word and give it like a new fresh start you know <laughs> give moisture a, a chance <laughs> uh, i had a um i had a numerology reading done the other day with um kat kinney katherine kinney oh, okay and she said because i've got nine in my numerology and 11 as well um, and she said, on 9-9, nine, nine, you've got to be playful. Well, you don't have to be, but, you know, she was like, it would be really good if you were playful. And I thought, well, I'm going to York, have my hair done. And then I thought, oh, but I quite imagine that it might be quite playful <laughs> with you. And here it is. Well, this is weird. I can't share it. I'm going to just put that down because <laughs> the buttons aren't working. I did. A, I had a numerology um I guess offered to me the other day by the lovely Judy Baker. She watched the live that Ryan and I did with Todd and she offered to, I guess she has this program and she offered to do a numerology sort of reading for myself, Ryan, and then us together. And yeah, it was, it's, it was really, really amazing to receive that. It was such a surprise little gift. And yeah, I mean, I don't, I haven't, I don't know much about numerology, but Ryan's quite uh, into it. And it was, I, I found out I was a 22, which is a master mm -hmm. builder. And I thought that was pretty cool. It kind of confirms, you know, how I've always kind of felt growing up, you know, do I, I don't really feel like I fit in, but I feel like I have a big purpose here. It just has always kind of haunted me, but yeah, it was kind of cool to find out. It's a really neat read through. Interesting. And now I don't have four. Because 22 is a four as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Together. And four is a lot of that process and structure. Um, and I don't have four at all. Oh, you hear the rain? No. You might zoom <laughs> in. It. It's raining really hard. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have four in there at all. And it would be quite useful to have four. Mm. Um, but I don't have it. <laughs> you I'm, can have some of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an 11 is my, I think I've got 11 twice, if I recall. Ooh. Anyway, where were we? I was trying to share. <laughs> sneeze. Oh, nope, it went away. I was about to sneeze. <laughs> oh, I hate it when you nice. swallow a sneeze. Oh, because <laughs> then it goes down and it's like, ugh. <laughs> All right. Oh, 
this is proper rain. I'm really liking this. Is it really coming down? Yeah. Oh, oh, it's kind of cleansing for the nine, nine and the whoosh. Flush it yeah, away. end of cycles, like flush it all away. Yeah. Yes. All right. That's enough of that computer stuff. I heard that. Unless that was the chair squeak again. <laughs> no, that was real. Okay. So back to business. <laughs> almost forgetting. I'm just enjoying this chat so much. I'm almost forgetting that I'm live on Facebook. <laughs> no, are we? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So normally when we start Love Speaks Love, um, we normally do a little, a little grounding and and just bringing ourselves to our <laughs> to our heart space. Here's me saying we don't have very spectacular storms. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, so yes, I'm going to do that. It might be, there might be some added sound effects in the background, but that is all good. So I invite us, if you want to close your eyes, you can do, if you don't want to, you don't have to, but I invite us to bring our awareness to our heart space. In the center of our chest. And let us all breathe love into our beautiful hearts. <sighs> and breathing out anything of the day so far or the day ahead. And breathing love into every cell of your bodies. Filling your body, your aura, the whole of your energetic field, the whole of your room, the whole of your house with love. And let us just push that love out a little bit further to the town, the city, the whole country where you are, across the seas. Let us spread that love all over the planet. and connecting our hearts, or to be more accurate, knowing that our hearts are connected and bringing that to our awareness. Mm. They're connected to each other. They're connected to Gaia. And feeling that beautiful energetic connection with Gaia. Feeling Gaia's love for all of us. Feeling Gaia's love moving into every cell of your body. And extending that heart awareness out to the heart of the sun, to the solar logos. And the love from the sun is returning to us. Again, moving into every cell of our bodies. And extending that heart awareness out to source creator. And feeling source energy moving into your hearts, into every cell of your body, going deep into the DNA. <clears throat> Actually, just feeling a little, I don't normally do this at the beginning, but I'm just feeling a little light language wanting to come forth. I'm just handing over to you if there's anything you would like to add, Christy. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm called to do a little balancing of the inner feminine and masculine energies. Beautiful. So I work with a whole range of high beings uh, and archangels. So I will just call them in as I feel called. 
So the left side body, I ask to have Archangel Michael come in and clear out any outdated or low frequency or distorted feminine templates we might carry ancestrally or in ourselves and DNA from this lifetime and all past lives. Just sort of sweeping through the left side body, clearing the wounded feminine, wounded goddess energies, clearing this for the soul group members we're connected to, our extended soul group, the monadic and megoic levels as well. Clearing ancestral feminine pain that we might be connected in with and more broadly towards the collective. And then just a very gentle yin energy coming into the left side body through the crown spilling over us almost like warm honey. And I ask Mary Magdalene, Shakti, Durga, and Kuan Yin, goddess of compassion, to slowly trickle these beautiful yin, divine feminine energies down our left side body. Slow like honey. Hmm. And just filling us with the beautiful yin softness. Surrender. Nurturing. Compassion energy. And then once our left side body is filled with these energies, allow them to spill over onto the right side, sort of nurturing and allowing our own inner masculine energies to feel held, to feel welcomed. And at the, just like the left side, I ask for the right side body to be cleared of any distorted masculine templates or energies that we house in ourselves, in DNA. Just sweeping through, clearing out wounded warrior, wounded father, wounded masculine energies we all carry ancestrally, collectively for the soul groups, extended soul groups we're connected to the monadic and megoic levels as well. And then I ask to bring in Krishna, Shiva, Archangel Michael, and a lovely rose pink Christ energy. And let's fill from the bottom this time and fill all the way up to the top, filling the right side body with these yang divine masculine energies. Powerful warrior, <laughs> gentle nurturing warrior energies. Filling us up slow like honey again. Filling all of our cells and DNA, extending outwards, those we're connected to. And as it fills all the way to the top, we allow it to spill over to our left side body. Supporting and protecting the inner feminine. Accepting her, surrendering to her. And then we just ask Lady Nada to just bless us with 
the divine union within. A balanced yin yang energy within and extending this outwards collectively. Lovely, that was what I wanted to add. <laughs> Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. Mm. <sighs> so I was going to ask you, oh, there's so much where to start. And that actually, before I do, um, so it feels like, it kind of feels like I've known you forever. And yes, it's only recently that you've like, you know, not even stepped into my world. You've kind of like, you've jumped, <laughs> jumped into my world. Um, and I was going to reach out, out to you after I saw you live with, with Ryan. That's where I first, um, first kind of noticed your name, but I'm sure it must've been around, you know, Solar J around, around Todd shows for a while. Um, but that was, that was kind of my first awareness. And then I went to check out your Facebook page and saw that you sent me a Facebook request. I was like, oops. Um, so eight months ago. <laughs> <laughs> they, oh, they get buried. Yeah, you know, totally. you don't see them straight away. Totally. Um, yeah, so apologies, apologies for that. Um, <laughs> and then we messaged a few times. And just the energy, you have really strong energy and, and it really comes through even just in very simple messages, like I could just feel it, I could feel your big, your big heart, you know, and how, how loving those messages are, and how funny as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you want to um, say a little bit about who you are, what you're doing here, as you know, like a little bit of an introduction to you first. Oh, sure. And thank you for saying that. That's, that's really lovely to receive. Um, well, when you say I kind of just appeared, I, that's kind of how I feel too. Um, you know, a few years ago, I, I was not in touch with anything spiritual, really. I was, or whatever you want to call <laughs> all of this, you know, I, I was very much, you know, working a job in a marriage in a you know, working my butt off, making lots of money, doing all the, all the things. And, um, I, I, my awakening was essentially a twin flame relationship, that whole crash and psh, implosion of your life. And I'm not attached to any sort of labels anymore in regarding that or anything like that. But at, at the time it was, uh, just a, such a instant, like, whoa, I'm thrust into this whole new world of energy of souls of you know all of this stuff and you know I mean to back up even further I've always sort of felt off you know I was I'm not like the family I incarnated into I, I'm I've always felt very distant from them and not I was never sure why you know of course the the kid thinks there must be something wrong with me you know why why don't I want to be close to people or like all of this stuff or why don't I why don't I fit in and all those thoughts and feelings that so many of us in the you know the, uh I guess ha our star seeds or whatever whatever I, again labels whatever but who feel that these things you know like feel like they don't belong and so I kind of carried that with me my whole life and kind of shoved it down a lot and then I sort of just you know sat with it and was like okay well maybe I'm just a little odd or something like that so yeah my my awakening happened and I started working with two mentors because I I just didn't know what the heck was going on and they were really really lovely people Jill and Ramey they were um they were twin flame healers and change your name <laughs> Ryan told me my name is Ryan Aguilar. <laughs> Change your name. <laughs> That's fine. I'll just be Ryan on Zoom. Um, so, yeah, um, you can change my name. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. And uh, now I've lost my, my train. It derailed. And yeah. Okay. So that, that I started working with these mentors and they were, are very wonderful advanced souls. And they told me they, op they did an Akashic record reading and I had never, I didn't know what the heck that was. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, this is, this is a uh, 2019. So not even, yeah. And they said, this is going to be quite quick for you. So like, hang on, but also don't hang on to anything. And I, I didn't really, I was like, okay, whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever. And pff, I, they were totally right. I have gone through such a crazy life transformation in such a, I mean, if you look at it, such a short amount of time, it was so fast and, you know, uh, quitting everything and totally changing my life. Like I was telling you before we jumped on this live that I've totally hopped tracks. It feels like, you know, so yeah, that was my awakening and it's been very quick. So when you say I kind of disappeared, that's kind of how I feel. Like I, I, I was writing and I was sharing it, but I was writing to essentially family members on Facebook. You know, I only had about 200 friends. They were all people I had met in the, in the, in the world, met in the world. And I was fine with that. You know, I was fine with this small group uh, you know, that I had known everyone. I was like, cool, this is, this is like an, an, a nice niche of people. And then I started writing about things that were, I guess, more difficult, like childhood trauma and things like that. And someone, I have no idea how, but I woke up one day and this thing that I had written had 40 something shares and was posted into this group called Soulogy. And I was like, what is this? And I have no idea who like started it, but my first friends, I guess you could say in the community were Augustine and Vera. They just, they were immediately in my circle and I was like, okay, who are they? And then it just, it went from there and suddenly I'm connected to all of these really amazing people that feel like family, you know, and, and they really feel like they're, they get me, you know, and I, I can't even explain that, that that gratitude that comes in, like knowing that my whole life, I wasn't weird or off or, you know, I was different, but it, you know, it's, it's such a gift to have that and to have these sensitivities that I thought, Oh, I'm just so sensitive. You know, they're, they're actually gifts and, ah, oh, it's, just, it's such a homecoming feeling. It's yeah. So I do, I ended up have been slowly sort of um, deleting people off of the, this Facebook and kind of just transforming it into a, a vessel. Now it doesn't really feel like it's my Facebook. It, it's just sort of like a vessel for me to share now, you know, and um, my family, of course, uh, I picked quite the template with families and, whew, um, they, you know, they were pretty displeased about what I was sharing and writing about. So I made the decision last year to choose myself and I deleted them all because I was trying to share and it, it almost kept feeling like I was being pulled back, you know, like that, like, no, 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 don't shine too bright. Get back here. Don't talk about family secrets and things like that. And I wasn't sharing anything, you know, to put them down or anything. It was just sharing from my experience and, and that, you know, so I, I had to choose myself. And as soon as I did that, oh, it was like a weight was lifted. You know, I had this ability to now speak freely online and type and not you know I had to kind of separate church and state for lack of a better term and and really just like get my ducks in a row over here so that I could feel a lot more strong if I did want to welcome them back onto Facebook and right now I, I, I still don't feel like it's it's sort of just this is my this is my life you know <laughs> yeah oh, nice wow what a because that's just a couple of years that's so much has happened in that couple of years and it's amazing, you know, sometimes, because I've, you know, I've, I've been doing this for, for a while, for about 20 years, and it blows me away when people are like, yeah, it was a couple of years ago, or it was 2012, so many people seem to have, you know, to wake up in 2012, and the speed that they not only catch up, but, you know, go 
way, 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 way ahead as well. Like it's incredible. And I find, I think that just gives you a little glimpse of how this can be with mass awakening on the planet as well, that there could well be this massive tidal wave of like boom, 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 boom. And, you know, the, the speed that, that people can, can progress in that is, is just amazing. Yeah, uh, that's exactly how I felt, at least, I mean, leading up until the summer, I thought, I felt stuck in molasses. Mm. But then as July and August, kind of, everything kind of just went for me. I, you know, I was able to say things uh, and type things and, and, and share and talk to people like this and in a totally more honest way than I had ever been able to do before and share and not feel that shame or that worry of what am I going to be, what am I going to be received as, am I going to be rejected, what are people going to think, it just, it's almost like these things just fell away, uh, and it's exactly what you're saying, the speed has been just wild, like, even just landing here in Texas, it's been two weeks, and, you know, I've had a lot of crazy looks from people from my old world, like, you're going to essentially live with this guy that you met on Facebook (laughs) (laughs) that you you know you've never met in person like are you nuts there's been a lot of that but I'm just like I I can't explain to people that you know he's a we've done this before we have a soul sort of we recognition you know it's it's hard to explain so I just sort of like (laughs) yeah I am (laughs) and it's been wonderful by the way (laughs) It's not, it's not weird at all. (laughs) And that's just, you know, that's just par for the course of this sort of timeline shifting and quantum just jumping around. It's just wild, you know, it's wild. It feels like I wrote in my post yesterday. It feels like, you know, even an hour ago feels like days ago. It's so wild. Mm. Oh, Mm. And I loved your sharing when you and Ryan were on together. Um, I loved how open you both were and how vulnerable and, and just how, how much you're prepared to just see it and not like, you know, push things under the carpet or just that, that pure honesty. And I can see in you that big desire to shift things. And you obviously have as well to have got from A to B in such a short space of time. You know, you've, you've obviously been really committed to this process that you're going through too, of, you know, shifting your patterns and being prepared to really look at things as well. And, and not just, you know, oh, oh I don't know, I'll just, I'll just put that over there for now, because it doesn't work. You may as well just embrace things fully. (laughs) Don't I know that? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I I think I've said this before, but it's almost like I took everything off, threw it against a wall to see what, just just to see it all. Like every aspect of my life, career, friends, my style, how I do my hair. I literally have looked at every single thing like, is this me or was it given to me through programming? What is this my mom's? Is that, you know, is this real? Is this belief that I believe really true? Every single thing. And, you know, I've got to tell you, Denise, most of it wasn't me. (laughs) (laughs) I would say 99% of it wasn't, or, you know, just acknowledging that certain friendships had run their course, you know, and I find that there are cycles that happen in knowing people, so, you know, oftentimes the gift has been exchanged, but our humans are kind of just hanging on to this friendship because it's comfortable or it's, you know, it and, and such like that. I've realized I had lots of those in my life, you know, uh, friendships and relations with people and casual texting conversations that just weren't interesting to me anymore, you know, so I've had to have a lot of difficult conversations in the last few years to really clear that up and 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 every time I do it it's just like I'm going towards this cliff and I jump off and 
and Annette appears <laughs> right after I'm like, oh no, what have I done? Like I get a like a lightning bolt sort of zaps my head and it's like, you need to uh, have this conversation with this person. And I'm like, really? Oh man, that's going to be difficult. I do the conversation. I do the hard thing. And then, wow, somebody comes into my life and they are so much more aligned. And this has happened every time, every time. It's like a deep trust that I've been really, that's trust has been essentially the basis of all of this, of like just trusting that, yeah, that you can like actually, that when you, when you dive, the net appears, you know, your wings appear. So, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And it, and it's true kind of authentic, you know, listening to your heart mm -hmm. as well, allowing you, your higher self, your, your soul to kind of be heard and living from that, from that place. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, authenticity goes hand in hand in hand with that, because I think quite often you just get to a point where you can't not do, you just can't not follow that guidance. You can't not, you just can't <laughs> after a while. Yeah, once the truth kind of started coming out of my mouth, I couldn't stop telling it and that's even like slight white lies, you know, like reasons for not being available. I can't even lie and say, I feel tired. I say, I don't want to, you know, I, 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 it's, it's, it's gotten to that point where even the smallest lie just feels like such a self betrayal yeah. and it's a betrayal really to the energy now, you know, now that energy speaks so loudly and that that's the main thing I follow, uh, it's so easy to feel a contraction versus an expansion now, you know, something that makes you feel this versus this. And so often those, those uh, 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 feelings, they're like instant now, you know, before I used to kind of struggle with my head would get, you know, get involved and have a, I want to have a say and try to convince me of all these things. And now my head, like ego is just very much in the back seat. I, I, I have a fun thing for the ego. I imagine like a limo and I'm in the front, higher self, Christy is just driving the limo and ego's in the back and it's just a, a movie star like, rah, 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 rah. and I just press the, the partition window and it's like, <laughs> and then ego just take it, take a break. We're just going to drive around the block. <laughs> That's like, awesome. Yeah. like a dramatic movie star that has all these needs and, and whatnot yeah it's like that <laughs> yeah yeah that's a good one mm -hmm. so quantum healing and feel free by the way if there's anything that comes up that you want to ask ask me as well feel feel free I meant to say that before we came on um yeah quantum healing that is a practice that that you do was that something that you experienced that made you want to do that yeah um so when i started off with uh i guess stepping into what i wanted to kind of do with my career after realizing you know i might be a have graphic design as like a skill i just i don't want to be a graphic designer you know what i mean um i have always been very uh, I guess, invested in discovery. I read before I went through my uh, spiritual awakening, I was very much on a path of getting, you know, things together with my physical body. Like I looked into nutrition and I started, you know, studying and reading so much psychology and all of, just all sorts of like, you know, self-help, whatever you want to call that sort of, I started looking at all of these things and, um, you know, after the spiritual awakening, it became very clear what my life path was. Like it just, it all, all of a sudden I was like, okay, I want to help people integrate their childhood trauma. Cause I came here and I experienced the whole breadth of it. And like every single thing I was like, I would like one of each of you please. And I just have taken it all. And I really feel so passionate about speaking about that. Cause because helping, like, as I've, like, healed all of these things, I've realized just how much, like, I want to help other people who felt like me their whole lives feel okay. And I'm, I think I'm very planted in, you know, three, 
if you want to label it 3D, 4D, like helping people kind of bridge that, like step out of their old into like their new. I, I do love the, you know, 5D perspective stuff. Of course, it's just easier for me to kind of be a bridge to those realms and, you know, assist people who might need help with their very human problems, you know, the, the human pains and, and wounds and whatnot. So yeah, um, I, I, when I started doing, working with those mentors, I talked about when they did my Akashic Records, they ended up offering a, like a practitioner sort of energy course, not course, uh, sort of like a small group of us to work with them. And as soon as I started practicing with these like energy alchemical tools, everything kind of came online, I suppose. Like it was, I could start as I cleared more and more density from my field, I was able to kind of see, like I can energetically see blockages and whatnot in the, in the field. I, they don't look like anything there. It's more like a sensing, but I can, you know, when I'm going through and, and like deep, I can like scan and I can poke things out and I'm, I'm like a dot connector, you know, I'm like, Oh, okay. So this might be a mother wound, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of wild and I'm still kind of stepping into it. So I'm, a, I, I don't, I'm not super, I wouldn't say confident in like, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm new at it still. <laughs> so I'm trying to say I'm like very, yeah, it's a very beginning process for me, but it, again, like we were talking about, it's happening so quickly and, and fast. So uh, I feel like these things are just like, Ooh, like maybe next week I'll be an expert. <laughs> So yeah, the quantum, the quantum scene has, you know, it, it's kind of always been there, I suppose, because I was always kind of able to sniff out, you know, cause and effect for people. Like if someone had this problem, I was like, oh, I could see why that would be, you know, and I've always been like that, but it was sort of inverted because I would do it from like an ego standpoint and be like, well, you have this problem. I'm going to tell you what to do and fix it for you. <laughs> and now that I've, you know, it's more just like, I have this offering to help. And if you would like me to, I can help. <laughs> so it's less intrusive this way. Like I know better than you. Like, no, <laughs> that's that partition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when, when you're doing that, are you, um, yeah, I think you kind of answered this question anyway, but I, I'm just getting a bit of an urge to go slightly deeper into it. So, for example, when I um, started doing energy work on the body, and it was it tended to be with with actual real people, um, mm -hmm. rather than you know an online where there's I mean there is no distance, but where in one way of thinking there's there's distance between you, um, and I would kind of put my hand over the body because initially for me clear sentience was my strongest sense, mm. so I would feel things particularly with my hands so running my hand down it you know you might be going over the over the heart space and you, your hands stuck like it then becomes you know a bit sludgy and that would often give me a visual so it's I often say it's like my hands are my eyes it's through my hands that I can see and it feels like my hands go right into the body as well they're not just working with the energetic field but they're actually going deep inside and sometimes I might get actual um, visuals. And because I was a nurse, I've got a pretty good idea of what the body kind of looks like, what healthy organs look like, that, that mm. kind of thing. So I might get a visual of, you know, sometimes it's quite funny, like the kidneys, for example, if someone's dehydrated and this doesn't actually happen, but the kidneys might be all like, you know, all like pruned, but they show, yeah. show me almost like a cartoon image. It's not. A literal thing um or the color might be a, a little bit gray i often used to kind of see that when they when they were really stuffed with emotion when someone you know doesn't cry and and it was all in their bodies and, and their kidneys were, were holding a lot of a lot of stuff that hadn't been released um so yeah that, that's often often how i do it these days my my visual sense is much stronger anyway but i still like to use my hands it's my first kind of port of call and I would often and I still do this have a little teddy bear and it's like I go down the bear because the bear's representing the person and it's just mm. the same like I can feel because my eyes are closed the energy between my hands 
it's just as if the person is between the hands you know mm -hmm. it's no it's no different so yeah I just I just wondered when you were saying before about you know you you feel things about the body how that how that kind of works for you yeah it's I'm, I'm just closing it and trying to it's kind of one of this is one of the first times I'm actually putting words to it actually so this is kind of lovely that I get this opportunity um I can just I can sense like heaviness you know and it is it is now that I'm using my hands it is like definitely with the hands that I can like sense little knots or like bundles of energy again yeah like what you're saying with organs and whatnot mm. it's sort of just like a yeah like a scanning with the hands but when I have my eyes closed it's almost like I'm I'm going like this you know like it's almost like one of those scanners going down and and then like what you said with the sludginess it is it's just like that I think I'm it's it's a very similar to what you're talking about but again this is the first time I'm kind of putting it into words it just when I'm in the moment doing it it feels so natural that you know almost describing it someone you're like you get all jumbled and you're like uh, uh I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> you know what I mean but yeah you do know what you're doing it's just yeah. sort of like one of those beautiful now moment experiences you know yeah and so much we haven't been taught so much we just know how to do intuitively as well yeah um you know I, I used to work a lot with with angels in the beginning I, I never really connected so much with spirit guides I might have an awareness that they would be there, but it was more the angelic realm and the ascended masters. Um, and it's, you know, it, the galactics have been very present as well. And, you know, you're getting messages from many sources because there's also the person's higher self that will be connecting in with that as well. You know, they're going to want to be, be in on that. And you know, giving giving information too. And oh, yeah. I, I, I feel from from what you brought in at the beginning that that you'd be working with that same kind of energy. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what that will look like. I do want to work with people. Um, I'm I'm trying to figure out what that will look like as the bridge, like what I talked about with the bridge, because you know. I, I kind of want to work with people who maybe haven't got into that spiritual side, the soul side of things. And I think bringing in angels is a little bit like, what? You know, I, I think like, I just use me as an example because I was so entrenched in all of that stuff that if someone was like, I'm going to bring in these angels. So like, <laughs> I would be like, okay, no. Like, I'd be like, get away from me, you weirdo. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, I'm just trying to figure out how to translate that into something that's a bit more like I do use light a lot, you know, like a light that's that's very accessible and, you know, using word energies like I like to set up uh, triangles where each point on the triangle has like a word so using like a word to, so say one word would be courage. Really feeling into what that energy of courage feels like and then moving to this one say this one is compassion really feeling into like what the energy of that and knowing like what the, the differences are between those two points so that you can kind of tap into those energies on this triangle and kind of use those as like your that sort of thing you know so so I think that I mean I've had over the years, people will ask me, you know, I've seen your writing. Do you have any like little quick little tips or whatnot? So I'll just, you know, using like basic grounding, like just visualizing roots of a tree and whatnot. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of working on like bridging that, you know, very spiritual to very ground, you know, sort of yeah. gap, I guess, you know, so something that's, again, I use myself as an example, just as like, who, would, how would I be able to access that? in relation to, you know, not being thrown off by the spiritual side of things to, yeah, I, it's, I guess it's sort of a, an interesting challenge, you know, it's, I, I don't really know, I haven't seen it around, you know, or I, at least I haven't found it in, in my own um, searching for mm. guidance, you know, because mine, mine was so like, crash, you're awake, and I was like, oh, 
<laughs> it's very, very dis, dis, uh, disconcerting. You know, you're just like, okay, what's going on? Everything's crumbling around me. Nothing makes sense. So maybe someone for like a, a, a more gradual awakening. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> and, and just for clarity, I wouldn't always say, oh, yeah, <laughs> we had a team of angels around the bed. Um, yeah. Often, you know, I started. I started this off as, as a nurse and was doing stuff with patients. And then when I moved to Australia, I worked in the backpackers doing sessions. And it was people's, you know, people were, were backpacking, they were trying new things. So they would often <clears throat> come to me for a little mini session just to see what it felt like. And often it was to come so that they could say, it doesn't work, I didn't feel anything, um, but that wasn't, you know that wasn't how it was at the end of it they'd be like oh wow <laughs> <laughs> what just happened um and it just yeah i if it felt right i might bring something in but it's it's yeah you you've got to just feel what the energy is like it, it was a bit of a miracle that any of them were having sessions really so yeah you didn't necessarily want to like scare them away too much <laughs> yeah that's that's really cool though that you even like they that they were open to that mm. like the backpackers that's where you uh working with people sort of from all over the world mm. yeah oh that's that's really cool so many different you know little <laughs> lineages and that's yeah. that's really oh that's so cool and the interesting thing for me as well was was um as soon as i got to byron bay in australia it, it was like a different energy started coming through me um, you know, I'd, I'd learned Reiki, I'd have different Reiki attunements and for at least four, maybe even five different kind of lineages of, of Reiki, like different frequencies of, of Reiki, different kinds. Um, and it felt like all of that was coming through, but there was a different energy, a more crystalline energy. Mm. And as soon as I got there, I started doing different things with my hands, which I realized now was, was like light language, written mm. light language, but I didn't know that at the time. And it felt it was just the perfect place for me to be because, because of the nature of, of this crystalline energy, everyone that received it wasn't from Byron. So they took that and often they were traveling the world. So they grounded that energy into the grids mm. oof, everywhere. And I, you know, I was, I was 50 when I, when I left there, I think. Um, and often I was like, why am I still doing this? at a backpackers, you know, like the party energy there used to drive me nuts sometimes. I'd be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> why am I still here? <laughs> and as soon it was like, as soon as enough of that energy was anchored around the planet, then it's like, right, you can go now. Um, wow. And that didn't click for a long time. You know, it's, it was pretty soon, pretty close to me going that I was like, ah, I get it now, how, how genius of the universe to put me there in in that place because if I'd still been in Manchester then that energy would all pretty much still be in Manchester but instead it was you know taken all over yes. and I, I love that whenever we tread on the grid we're sparkalizing the grid you know we're leaving a trail of energy behind us so the places that I've traveled to which is not that many but I feel a strong connection to those places um and when I do grid work, I can I can feel that I'm connecting in, especially with those with those particular places. Mm, yes. Did you do grid work as well? Did I hear you, you say that with? Yeah, I I was gonna say that actually next. That <laughs> I, I feel so connected to the land here. I as soon as I got here, and it's not because of ryan although it's like a nice feeling too but i just the land itself earth itself earth herself just outside the 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 front there's this willow tree the one that i posted it's as soon as i saw it i was like oh like it just it felt so holy i i can't really yeah I, it, it was just such an amazing peaceful feeling and there's a park just uh on the other side just outside of this gate and Todd was actually talking about this park because he's been to this park mm -hmm. and he had a big experience in this park and you know he said that's a very holy place and I have been drawn to that park almost every day since I've been here and you just walk around and it's it's like a just a vortex 
and very just it's it's so specific to the I don't know the trees and the flowers and just all of the vegetation just really speaks to me in some way it's it's very familiar and even just you know I'm trying not to like romanticize the south or anything like that but it it does feel like a very nurturing place down in this area like what I was telling you about the humidity and stuff I I used to I used to have a you know have issue with like really high temperatures and, and whatnot I feel really like it, it although it is hot and it is an adjustment it does feel nurturing to me you know it, it's almost like my my skin my cells they've changed you know the crystalline structure has has really just like I, I feel now that I'm stepping into like now I do like the heat now I do like the humidity now it's just different you know from what I'm used to this like drier cold climate in Canada uh I mean, you know, UK, Canada, kind of similar in <laughs> places, yeah. But yeah, the um, the 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 grid work here, like I sat under that willow, and it's almost like I could, I sat down and I could just see everything sort of light up. And there's been so many animals, uh, birds, and the butterflies, just so prominent here, everywhere, all the time. Just it, I don't. It's a magical wilderness down here. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, it's really lovely. Yeah. So what does grid work look, look for you when you do need, like you just mentioned then that you kind of seen right. the grid almost? Yeah, so I am clearing densities. So I am clearing uh, entities, I'm clearing low frequencies. I have uh, a like a series of charts with a pendulum that I use and I clear discordant energies for the area. I expand outwards, you know, I just clear this specific area, but then expanding outwards you know like what we did at the beginning with the heart and expanding out and touching all so I do that um, and clearing for the land and uh, there's been a few they've been chopping down some bush and whatnot and just in general just sending out you know blessings and um, clearing densities for for Gaia and and everywhere I go I'm kind of doing clearings wherever we go if we're going on a walk or to run errands or whatnot it's it's sort of that's what it looks like to me it's it's I'm I'm a transmuter like I I'm very I'm very connected into moving energy you know just taking what's dense moving it into lightness and and whatnot and it really yeah it, it's it's been it's been really lovely doing that here again because I feel so connected to the land in in Calgary where I was I felt this way too and then as soon as I had completed the mission. It was like you were what you were talking about in uh, Byron Bay. It just felt done. I was like, okay, I've done what I needed to do. And then it was like, here's your next chunk of land and good work. So yeah, just clearing density and bringing in more lightness. What about for you? I just got an image as you were saying that as well of, of, of us being keys. You know, you mm -hmm. stand on a spot and all the energy and the codes that you're holding, it's just like a, and it kind of, you know, it, it goes in, but it's not just in where you are. It just goes and goes, you know, like far and wide. It's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. When I started doing um, grid work, I'd, I'd call it now, I didn't really know what I was doing at the time, particularly. Um, so I'd, I've been a Reiki master for a couple of years, so I, I'd been doing attunements on people, which is where you kind of like open people up to particular frequencies of, of energy. And I was in this amazing Morton Bay fig tree, which is like a majestic fig tree and the, the roots are massive buttress roots. Um, really, really beautiful to a 300 year old tree. And I got the guidance because I was gardening for my accommodation at the, at the backpackers, so I had to go in the tree for some, for some reason. <laughs> the ladder, it was like such an honour. Um, and I was just sitting <laughs> on one of the branches and was, was guided to do an attunement on the tree. And I'm like, <laughs> say what? Surely the tree's, you know, transmitting <laughs> in, in that energy on its own. And, and that's where it started with that particular tree. Um, but then in, in other places out in nature, I just started like, you know, doing various things with with my hands and I just let my my body do what it wanted to do but I didn't really know 
exactly what it was that I was and I didn't feel I needed to mm -hmm. and I would I would always because it's such a sacred land and because the ancestor energy in Australia is, is so strong I would always tune in to to kind of ask permission as well it's not like I wanted to change the energy of very beautiful places that was my feeling I didn't want to do that but the guidance was very strong to to just do it and now I get it you know it's the grid that you that you're upgrading really and 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 for me it's about bringing crystalline frequencies in that that's been a lot of a lot of what I've been doing and yeah just as we said before just whenever you walk you're just leaving this this trail of of sparkles behind you yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of what it feels like mm. you know it, I, I was saying this to Ryan just yesterday that I can I can find joy in the most mundane of things uh just you know running errands or in a big you know in Best Buy or something like a big store that I normally wouldn't go into I just I can feel I can I can I kind of go in there and and send, kind of just send out you know love or peace or just any sort of and I always ask like you I ask just if it's in highest good that they receive because if they if they're not meant to or they don't want to then they just won't so it's but at least the intention and the actual act of service is there it just it feels very like a behind the scenes sort of you know and, and, and honestly it's an honor to to do it like it feels like an honor it feels like you know I came here to do this and it's just yeah it, it's an honor really to just kind of do that and not need and not needing like acknowledgement that I'm doing I don't need like a trophy or a stamp of like good job you <laughs> like it, it it's just it feels like that's my a little piece of my the quilt you know like the giant quilt of we all get our square and that's my square for contributing to the whole <laughs> yeah sometimes I leave like codes energetic codes like in the supermarket and places like that <laughs> and you know they're just there I'm not forcing it on anyone they're just there so if there's a resonance in their heart they'll pick them up mm. and if there isn't they won't you know or on the bus or on a train yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's lovely. Even, yeah, even blessing. Um, like I blessed the plane that I was flying on when I came here. And, you know, I just imagined it surrounding it in an octahedron and just all sorts of things like just and sit, uh, sitting on an airplane is a is a whole other is a whole other experience with that transmuting because you can just ooh, yeah, there, yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> I set, I set those up all the time I love them <laughs> they're just so lovely like you can really feel like when I started doing this practice you can really feel the the difference of the energy within it and then without it like I I started getting like it's almost like you're you're feeling like it's like a pane of glass almost you're like okay what does it feel like inside of it now what does it feel outside of it and getting to know those differences in energy so you can kind of feel when you're yeah it's a subtle it's a subtle thing but once you attune to it it's it's quite a lovely practice mm -hmm. i love that you have those those are so cool what are they made of pot cleaners <laughs> i love it i was gonna say popsicle sticks <laughs> so <laughs> what i'm trying to do here so this one i did this to start with and then i made like different tetrahedrons i thought what will it be like if each of these sides has a tetrahedron fitted on it and it would be a 15 pointed star I, no not 15 pointed how many was it eight must be eight there's eight sides yeah that's never good so, at math <laughs> so it'd be like an eight pointed star and i i did something with three octahedrons that weren't like they were they were longer like these and mm. i did it in a computer program, I did it in um, Affinity Designer. And I was creating a crystalline key for the body because I could feel that there was trauma stuck in my body. And I could feel that my fight flight had never fully switched off. And I was guided to create this crystalline key that went into certain, certain places in the body to switch off the fight flight or put it into neutral, let's say, so that it would still come on. Um, you know, if it was needed, if, if there was a rhinoceros in front of me, <laughs> that I needed to run away from. Um, but not that it would be on 
all the time. <laughs> and so as, as part of this, there were three of these octahedrons that slotted together really beautifully, but it also then looked like a Merkaba. Mm. Um, and I was, so my purpose with these, and I, I haven't got very far, is I want to put these together like that diagram is to actually see it in 3D but it's really taxing my brain to <laughs> have made the octahedrons but to actually like find a way to connect them in with each other that's why we have computer programs <laughs> yeah. modeling computer programs um but yeah maybe it might it might drop in one day but that's <laughs> Denise and her geekiness oh I love it oh <laughs> we um when I was in design school they made us do everything by hand before we were even able or allowed to touch the computer we had to learn to like in color theory class and you know shit human like we did sketching of live naked humans and fruit bowls and all that still life drawing just to get our hands used to like yeah. creating something and then digitizing it you know not to lose that sort of analog I'm I'm like I'm very tactile I like to see things like like kind of like that so that's cool maybe I'll try to make some <laughs> <laughs> they do show me <laughs> yeah, absolutely yes those those octahedrons are so they're so lovely I, yeah yeah and it's it's really interesting because I know I know Todd and Morgan are talking about it a lot at the moment there was oh, shall I share this okay I don't really share this publicly um so the other day I was doing some work on certain parts of my body where, where I've been working in these places for a while. I'm like, I'm kind of over these slow, like I'm getting there, but it's a slow process. I said, I'm kind of, I want something new. Now it's time for the news to, to speed these things up. And a while ago, I had this experience spontaneously where the tips of my fingers, not there, but the actual tips <clears throat> were down, but it, it felt like it started, it was more concentrated on the tip. It was like laser. <clears throat> it was like this, you know, when you burn magnesium, if you remember in chemistry and it goes, Phew. yeah, it, it was like that. I mean, I know white light. It didn't feel like white light. It's almost like platinum. On your fingertips? Yeah. Ooh. And it felt like it was coming out. So the other day after I'd asked this, <clears throat> that's what happened. I, I felt the presence of the Arcturians and then Isis, and I was I was told to blow on the tips of my fingers, and as I did that, it activated this this thing, and I could like send the energy in and out to kind of clear my hands because I've been working on my hands for a long time. Um, so I'm I'm still playing with this, but when I tuned into what it looked like, I could see this like stream of octahedrons together. Wow. And if I looked deeper in, I could see even more complex geometry in there. It was random. If you think of a Harley Quinn, you know the the costume that a Harley Quinn wears, yes. it's all like diagonals. It was almost like that, but they were kind of all joined joined together. So, mm. wow, mm. that's really cool. That's it's interesting. A, that's a neat activation. And that's the other day when I was playing it playing with it, it it's like it went to a point and it feels like a different stream is, is <clears throat> kind of coming out of each finger but I can put them together as as well and have it as one one big stream so I've been playing with that quite a lot because because normally I'd you know just place my hands flat because more energy tends to come out of the palms it comes out of my fingers as well but more from the palms but this is slightly different it, oh, oh oh it's oh it's happening now <laughs> So it's very much coming out of the tips of, of my fingers. So, yeah. Did you feel like a heat almost? From yeah, the, but yeah? It, it's like you can feel the heat deep inside. But when it's the time when it happened spontaneously, it was so hot. It was almost, oh gosh, I'm getting a bit dizzy. It was almost painful. Mm. Um, and it was, it was bizarre. Like it just happened spontaneously. And I thought, I wonder what will happen if I put my hands somewhere on my body. And it spread to that place that I put it. And it was it was a hotter heat <laughs> than I've ever felt in all my years of, of doing this work. Like it, it was, yeah, it, it was weird, but good. Wow. Mm. Watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You've heard it here first, folks. 
<laughs> like laser treatment. <laughs> Could you do my eyes first? I'm kind of sick of wearing glasses. <laughs> laser eye. <laughs> I wonder how we're going to evolve with these quickening gifts. And I just wonder what we'll be capable of sometimes, you know, and I guess I don't need to know and it'll just happen, but there's so much cool stuff I hear about people, people's abilities and things that are happening for people. It's just wild. It's just wild. Like, wow. <gasps> Speechless. I wonder what will happen with your graphic design background and your creative background, because I feel that that's going to come back in again. Do you, do you feel that, that it's, yeah. you know, it's kind of maybe put to the side for now, but there'll be, there'll be some, some way of it coming back in. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I see it as like a tool. If I, if I see a tool belt of like these just little things I've picked up over the years, like the, the certifications I have, like EFT and all these things, like I just, I see them all as little tools and I can kind of pick them out of the belt and combine them. And so, you know, I went to school for this and then I was a communication designer and art director for many years. So I, I feel very comfortable creating in that medium, you know, a digital design and, and whatnot. And I love typography. Like I, my, my, my final project actually, when I was in school, was you have to make your own brand, like your own personal brand. And I actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I made some sort of interlocking shape. <laughs> it wasn't anything, it wasn't sacred geometry in the like, in the way that that's like, like all measured and whatnot, but it was in a way like some sort of messy sacred geometry. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, the shape that I was creating, I was making a shape out of the three things that I felt that I could contribute, which was uh, writing, feeling, and design. So I kind of put those three things together and made these shapes and they had three different colors and it was all interlocking. I wish I had, yeah, I, I don't have anything to show you. I wish I could kept one, maybe <laughs> online somewhere, but yeah, it was just so interesting how that was in 2015. So I set myself up with that, you know, going forward and now it's 2021 and that's totally what I would like to contribute still, you know, even after all of this, mm -hmm. it's like some sort of combination of writing, of design, of uh, feeling, you know, I, I've always been that deep feeler, of course, like so many of us are, and being able to tap into energies now as those feelings and combine them is, yeah, it's, it's a tool. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how I use it. Like I said, I'm in that clearing of the woods where everything is just sort of peaceful around me right now and I'm about to embark I feel it into the next sort of wilderness of what the next you know what the next steps are so yeah, <laughs> yeah. now we talked before we came on about maybe doing a little bit of a process at, at the end how, how do you feel about that are you running short of time or Oh, no, I, I was thinking it was sort of like about the, I was going to set up an octahedron uh, and do, but I kind of already, <laughs> kind of, we kind of already went there a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just going to, you know, maybe walk through how to set one up with, with people so that they could maybe try one on their own if they're watching and haven't done it, it might be cool. Okay, maybe I'll just do it. It's, it's, it's oh. quite easy and it's very accessible. So, um, yeah, is that is that cool with you? That's amazing. Wonderful. Okay. Sometimes I even like to, like what I was showing you with the triangle of the different energies, sometimes it's even nice to feel energies like at different points along the octahedron, but I'll just do the simple one for now. <laughs> so if you are listening along, <laughs> just sit in a comfortable seat or you can stand if you're standing or laying down also works. Just be comfortable. And what I tend to do is start a few feet above the head, above the crown, and just imagine a really bright, loving, pure energy above your head. And then one a few feet below your feet. 
so down into the earth. And then once you kind of get the sense of those above and below you, about an arm's length out to the left and to the right of your body, produce two more of those sort of sparkling, I like to call them the disco ball of divinity. <laughs> that's just <laughs> that's just me being on brand with my disco ball soul. Uh, and then also, if you just turn it a bit, about an arm's length in front of your heart and behind you in the same direction so that you have one, two, three, four, five and six behind you and in front of you and beside. So I hope that wasn't confusing if you're following along with your eyes closed, but from the top one and the bottom one, I like to imagine it almost like little like light beams or, or rods or whatever you'd like to use, just coming outwards slowly so that they are forming the shape, those triangle shapes coming down to connect to the ones beside you and the ones in front and behind you. Sort of just like this. I can't see myself because I would have my eyes closed, but I'm trying to make the shape <laughs> like a diamond. And then once the shape or once the top and bottoms have connected to the sides, I like to connect from the front and back and the sides, left and right. One of those gold, uh, light rods coming through and just going right through your heart space, out the back, and then same with the sides. So that it's almost like you're in this beautiful shape, it's encompassing you. And then once it's created, I like to feel kind of what it feels like to be inside of one. Well, first, actually, I fill it with vibrant light, pure light, source light, crystalline light, whatever you feel comfortable using. Just fill that shape with as much light and loving energy as you can and this is just sort of your protective space almost like your energetic boundary and once you kind of feel what that feels like i like to stick a hand outside of it and kind of feel what that feels like and and just sort of it's a subtle difference but it is you can feel it the difference of feeling inside of it and outside of it and that it's kind of nice because like when you're interacting with people, I can kind of feel the shape so that if someone is coming in hot with a bunch of energy at me and you know, you're sensitive, you don't want to get plugged into, I kind of just imagine the shape almost like they're outside of the field and you're inside of it and you're safe in here, if you know what I mean. And so once that's established, I spin it. I just imagine it starting to spin just like quick flick almost like you're throwing a frisbee and it just starts spinning and from the spinning it just expands outwards to whatever you're comfortable with as being like your expanded field and then that is what I will do and I'll, I'll recalibrate the spinning throughout the day as I am led to but yeah I set one of those up in the morning and then before I go to bed and just throw intention in there too of like this will protect my energy from being drained or this will, you know, whatever the intention is, that's, that's how I set up that octahedron. Yeah, it's kind of just like a really, it's, it seems, you know, it, it's, it's just a simple little practice that actually kind of makes a difference. The more I practice it, the more it does make a difference for me, so. Yeah, beautiful. And, and it just feels like everybody doing that it's inputting the octahedral, is that even a word? Grid and yeah. planet as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. Amazing. I, yeah, octahedrons have been very, very key for me for a long time. Um, when I was still in Australia my last year there, I would take my chai tea in the morning because I live just across the road from the beach and I'd go and sit on the beach, drink my chai tea and then do a light language activation. And I would end by by kind of drawing an octahedron around me. I'd 
bring my hands to a point, like, you know, as high up as I, as I could. So in the soul star chakra and bring, bring my arms, you know, right out to the sides and then down. And obviously you can't get down far enough with your hands, but visualize <laughs> it going down beneath the ground. And I would be like, why am I drawing a diamond around me? Because I didn't really at that time know so much about octahedrons. I knew about, you know, I'd activated my Merkaba ages before, but I'm like, why am I doing octahedrons? Um, but it it makes more sense now. Like I I I get it. And I would kind of like push it out at the front and push it out at, at the back to make those extra those yeah. extra points. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a good way. It's almost like you're molding putty. Mm. <laughs> like you're like, oh, that's cool. I like that. Yeah, that's, I love that you were doing it without knowing why or what you were doing, but that it makes sense on some other quantum level. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank you for that. That was really lovely. Yeah. Thank you, I, thank you for the conversation. Yeah, it was so lovely. <laughs> lovely to finally connect and we got to know each other. This is the first time we've talked, mm. which is really, really cool. This is a yeah. new way to get to know someone. You know? Mm. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it. Like I say, it feels like I've known you forever, but. Yeah, absolutely. It energy would be recognizes energy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'd be lovely to have you, have you on again. Yeah. I would love that. <laughs> In fact, um, so I'll mention at this point for my hundredth show, which might be next Thursday, but I haven't actually started arranging or doing anything for it yet. What I want to do for that is um, bring on as many people as would like to that have been guests before that either do grid work or speak light language um, to kind of hold the space. And often when I've been on calls, you know, we just kind of take it in turns to speak light language in, into the space. Um, but the purpose of it is for the hospital network on the planet, because mm. this is kind of honoring, honoring my nursing as well, really, and, and, and the hospitals, which have obviously been under a lot of strain um, recently, and to kind of whoosh the energy of the hospitals and give it like a bit of a, like a crystalline, frequency upgrade or whatever like I'm not really necessarily attached to the outcome of this but it feels right to gather people together to to put energy basically into the hospital into the hospital network so that's what I am planning to do and you'd be most welcome if you would like to no oh, thank you and it might be that you know that some people speak some people don't some people are just doing their thing in in the background because there's not going to be 99 people because people have, have come back and not everybody does this, but you know, I've no idea at this stage how many people there'll be. So even those that, that speak and share codes or, or whatever, um, it'll only be for a, a short time, but I suspect there might be people there as well that are kind of just holding space and anchoring, anchoring mm -hmm. energy in. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's what I want to do. That's a great idea for an 100th show. Oh, I love it. That's so cool. Yeah, that, I, that's a lovely idea. And I would love to be a part of it. Yeah, I suspect I suspect I'd be a good anchor, <laughs> a background person <laughs> holding it down. <laughs> I got a tattoo of an anchor when I was 18. And I don't know why. But now I know. <laughs> for Interesting. This moment. Yeah, this house that I'm living in used to be a pub years and years and years ago. It's like, Two or a three pub years. yeah two or three oh, so years cool. old but it was called the crown and anchor <laughs> of course <laughs> can't make this stuff up i know when i heard that i was like yeah this is the place i want to live that's what <laughs> i do <laughs> that's amazing i love it oh, so thank you everybody who's who's been with us as well um yeah sorry i did <laughs> distracted by one of these <laughs> yeah, Pamela I would love Helen Quayle to be in that as well Helen <clears throat> Helen's been a guest twice so um yeah it feels pretty potent and one of my guests Leanne um Taiki I know I think I've got that right we mentioned this when she was on the show because she'd um she'd had a stroke some years ago a couple of years ago 
Um, and while she was in hospital and in and out of consciousness, she was doing a lot of work with the, with the hospital and wow. clearing energy and, you know, bringing in the elementals and all the rest of it. So we, we touched on it then. So I think I want to make sure that, that it's a day that Leanne can come because, you know, I know that, that that's close to, to her heart. So, mm. yeah, as soon as I know when, I will let people know. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you too. That was so lovely. <laughs> Thank you. It was, yeah, it was a really lovely chat. It was nice to be able to kind of fumbly put words to what I'm <laughs> hoping to step out into more. <laughs> so thank you. It didn't sound fumbly. Oh, thank you. Yes, of course. It, we're always our, our harshest critics, aren't we? <laughs> hmm. So yeah, thank you. Thank you again to you and thank you to everybody watching either live with us now or on the replay um, or on YouTube on my channel, which is in a piece with Denise. And I will see you for the hundredth show. So I will Sorry. stop the live stream. Bye everybody. <laughs>